Isaiah chapter number 10, verse 27. I see Brian, I see Esther, they God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I feel it, it's going to be too much. It's good to be here. Isaiah chapter number 10, verse number 27. Acts chapter number 2 from verse number 1, going down. I told you I'm afraid to preach tonight, right? If you say amen, my fear will run away. Yeah. Isaiah chapter number 10 from verse number 27. It shall come to pass in that day in hungry generation that the burden will be taken away from off thy shoulders and thy yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Touch your neighbor and say, double my anointing. If your neighbor didn't say, I receive, tell your neighbor, I'm taking back my anointing. Acts chapter number two. Acts chapter number two. Glory to Jesus. The book of Acts is going to happen tonight here. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they all, all gathered in one place, and suddenly they heard a sound from the heavens as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they appeared unto them clothed in tongues as of fire, and each divided set upon them. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And everybody was shocked and said, this is what's happening in hungry generation. Amen. We go to verse number 14. And Peter standing up with the eleven, he raised his voice and said unto them, men of Judea and all the dwellers of Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose. This is not vodka. <laughs> Since it's only the third hour of the day. But this was what was prophesied by prophet Passion in Hungry Generation. Amen. That it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord. That I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. And old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and my maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Speak to us tonight. Bless us. Release a revelation that will cut up our us to another dimension. We are sick and tired of being slaved by the flesh. We are praying for a breakthrough tonight. We don't want our flesh to dominate. We don't want our mind to cause us to sin anymore. We want the Holy Spirit to lead us from this very day. Father, I pray that you open heaven tonight. Every window in heaven, let it be open and pour the rivers of revelation. Open forth our ears, our eyes, that we can hearken and perceive what the Spirit says to the church. I want to thank you, God, for the prophetic word that you're about to speak to somebody. I want to thank you for the healing you're about to release on somebody. I want to thank you for that addiction that's about to be broken. I want to thank you, God, for the move of the Holy Spirit. For my brothers, my sisters are getting ready to receive new spirits. They are getting ready to receive an anointing. They are getting ready to receive the fresh tongues from above. Therefore, move Holy Spirit and do your things tonight. Release your power. Release your anointing. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody shout amen. Glory. Glory to Jesus.
Uh, God bless the worshipers. I heard best voices tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I want to try to behave as much as I can, but I feel like going crazy in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I feel it. I feel it so strong. Uh, it is not easy to serve God because of the flesh that we have. Or sometimes we just want magic. No sin, no devil, no demon my way. Uh, I wish God can anoint me that when I walk, every demon runs away from me. When I sleep, no demon comes in my house. But it is so hard to serve God with the flesh that God gave us. Uh, many people, they are not in church, not because they didn't want to be in church, but they feel they are not worthy to be in the house of God. They have sinned and sinned and repented before God until they felt like, uh, I don't think God is going to forgive me. Because it's one thing not to want to sin and don't sin. And it's another thing to want to sin and you sin and you feel like God is not with me. Many people have struggled in Christianity because of the flesh. Therefore, the flesh becomes our greatest enemy. Jesus was sent by God. He is God himself who sent himself on the earth realm. Because God and the devil himself, they are not allowed to operate in the earth realm unless there is a human being. Because the earth was given to human beings. So God to save us, he could not do it without having the flesh. That is why he was to be born by Mary. And when he came now, he was only born to die. He was not born to change water into wine. He was not born to change everything and do miracles and healings. He was only born to save everybody in hungry generation. God he had to send him that he can die on the cross. So he knew he was coming to die. But I had him struggling in the Garden of Gethsemane when he started praying and he says, Lord, Nevertheless, your will be done because I, I don't want to die. How, how many of you want to go to heaven here? How many want to go now? <laughs> Jesus now begins to struggle because nobody wants to leave this earth realm and, and the flesh doesn't want to die. His spirit wants to save the world, but the flesh he, he doesn't want to go through the pain. But sometimes you have to understand it is that pain that releases the anointing of God. Because for you to have the anointing oil, the olive leaves have to be crushed for an oil to come out. That means sometimes we need a crush for our anointing to be seen out there. The problem we have now is we stand here and God wants us there. But for us to get there, we have to pass through here. And we don't want the journey. We don't want the struggle. We don't want the situations that on the way to my breakthrough. But God is never God unless there is a situation. You can never know him as a healer unless you are sick. You can never know him as a deliverer unless you are bound. You can never know him as a prosperous God unless you are poor. So he creates situations for a revelation. So he says in this situation you are in, don't use your mind, don't use your own ability. Just go by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. That is why many people, they don't understand you because when they are persecuting you, they see you laughing. Because they expect you to react according to what they want you to react. But they see you reacting otherwise because you are not being led by the flesh now. You are led by the spirit. 
For those that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, I struggle with the flesh now because I don't want to commit sin. Paul writes in the book of Romans, chapter number 7. He says, I wish to do what is good, but I find myself doing what is bad. When I want to do good, evil is always present before me. There are people that are in here that don't want to do what they do every day. And sometimes you go through it and you say, this is the last time. And tomorrow comes and you say, the last, last time. Next week comes, you say, the last, 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 last time. It is the struggle that you go through with the flesh. And the question is, how am I going to come out from my own struggle? It's one thing for the devil to attack me, and it's another thing for me to desire to do it and want to do it. I have heard a lot of people in church giving testimonies of them overcoming a man that came and wanted to offer money and do something, and they overcame the man because they didn't want the man. Now, it's another thing now when somebody you like comes your way. It's not like the devil is sending somebody. It's somebody that you already like. Uh, it's something that oh, you are craving for. You know now you are in Christ. You can touch drugs. You can drink. You can do what you used to do. But there is a crave that comes in your spirit. And sometimes it's hard for you to sleep without doing something. Now God says, I have to release the anointing over you. Because the anointing becomes the answer for you to come out from every struggle that you are in. Uh, can you both come this way? Now, I, I want you to understand if we are in Africa. Remember, I, I come from Zimbabwe. When we are doing farming, sometimes we take uh, the, kettle and the kettle and we put a yoke so that we can control them. If you don't yoke them, you can't control them. That is why the devil can never get to you unless he yokes you. And the only way he yokes you is to come and attack your mind so that if you desire something, then you are in danger. Now, the problem that we have sometimes is some people, they don't afford a lot of cattle. So what they do, they take one cattle and a donkey. And when they are both pushing and pulling now and moving forward, the cattle have more strength than the donkey, so the donkey is going to be struggling because this one pulls more and this one now have to pull back this one and pull this one from behind. I came, thank you, I came to tell some people that things been rough in life because you are yoked with some people that are not in your level. And every time you want to go do something good, they pull you back to do what you don't want to do. Which means there are people in life you mustn't be connected to because as long as you are with them, you struggle with sin. There are people that were good five years ago that you can't be with right now. I know I'm talking to somebody right here. Look at Samson. Samson is a very anointed and powerful man of God. He goes on Delilah's lap and Delilah says, what's your secret? And he says the secret. Uh, he lies and, and she binds him and he says, oh yeah, the Philistines be upon you. He destroys all of them and he knows she wanted me dead if I had told her the truth. Notice what happens now. He goes back again and again and again. And she was killed by what he loved. In life, not everything you love is good for you. You have to say goodbye to some people in life. You got to delete some people's numbers in your phone book. Because there are people the devil will use to destroy your future. You have to understand that when God is blessing you, he leaves you from the dust of the ground and put you on top of the mountain. If you are still connected with the people that are down the valley, they are going to pull you down. You have to be with people that are in the same level with you so that when you go down, you are not going down because somebody is pulling you down. You are going down to pull up somebody. 
that is why after this conference uh, <clears throat> that is why after this conference you need to go back to the people you were with in the world and tell them there is a Jesus in hungry generation you need to go out there I didn't come here to only prophesy or heal people I came to touch somebody who is going to go out there and touch somebody God is going to release an anointing that will move somebody from one level to another level now the Bible said in the book of uh, Isaiah 10 verse number 27 and on that day the yoke shall be broken and the bed and shall be removed because of the anointing. The Bible never said the yoke shall be broken, the anointing shall break the yoke. No, the anointing does not break the yoke. But because of the anointing upon you, the yoke will be broken. What is the anointing is the question. The anointing means riches. The anointing means prosperity. The anointing means weight. The anointing means the power and the ability to do something. Now, when we deal with the anointing in form of weight now it means the more anointing you have the more weight you carry uh, we someone can get where this is going when God spoke to Jonah he says I'm sending you to Nineveh in another words God anointed Jonah for all the people that were in Nineveh let's say there were 10,000 people it means he was given an anointing for 10,000 people which means his weight was no longer his weight alone he had his weight and the weight for 10,000 people they took Jonah and they placed him in the boat and he, he is traveling with them the boat now is not stable because the weight in the boat is not balancing they started taking cargo and throwing the cargo outside thinking it is the weight on the cargo not knowing it is Jonah who is the problem when the anointing of God comes upon you you become a problem wherever you go because not everywhere you go, you can be accommodated. That is why some people, you were kicked out from that house because your anointing can't be accommodated in that one room. That is why you lost your job because your anointing can't sit under that bus. Your anointing is too much that they cannot accommodate you around them. Wish I can talk to somebody right here. <laughs> They, 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 they took Jonah and when Jonah was in the boat now, he got up and he says, no, the problem ain't anything else you are throwing out. Remove me from the boat because the weight I'm carrying is for everybody in Nineveh. So when they put him in the water, the whale says, wow, here is a meal for the day, catch of the day. Boom, he is swallowed by the whale, but the whale could not digest him because the weight on Jonah was too much. It's one thing for me to bite bread. I can digest it, but I can't put a stone and digest it because of the weight. So the whale could not digest Jonah because the weight on him was too much. I just came here to tell somebody that you just have to be careful when the anointing comes upon you. Because sometimes when the anointing comes upon you, you may be in a relationship and your relationship goes funny because the men around you will not be able to accommodate the anointing you carry upon your life that's why you mustn't go into the world to look for somebody to marry because they will never accommodate the anointing upon your life now when the anointing is running in your spirit now it will never function unless the Holy Spirit comes upon you touch your name and say you need the Holy Spirit Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you now, he activates the anointing so that the anointing begins to function. For example, now Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach, which means I cannot preach unless I have the Holy Spirit. I cannot teach unless I have the Holy Spirit. I cannot prophesy unless I have the Holy Spirit. I cannot heal the sick unless I have the Holy Spirit. 
which means in all you're getting, get the Holy Spirit. You may want to prophesy, but it's not about the gift. It's about the giver of the gift. Because as long as you have the giver of the gift, the gift is under your control. That is why tonight I'm going to be doing many, many, many more. My mother told me to choose this one. And I begin to prophesy on this one because now I am not only operating with the gift. I have now the spirit of the gift. The Bible says to one is given the gift of prophecy. But to Jesus, the Bible says the testimony of Jesus ain't the gift, but is the spirit of prophecy. Now, when the spirit comes upon you, your life will never be the same again. God is getting ready to change somebody's life. And he's saying, I'm pouring my spirit upon all flesh. And all sons and daughters, they shall begin to prophesy. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your life will never be the same again. Now, uh, there are symbols in the realm of the spirit. For example, if you see an eagle, an eagle represents a prophet. But when you see a dove, a dove represents the Holy Spirit. It's not like when you see a dove outside, you say, the Holy Spirit is right there. No, it means when you see a vision of a dove, it represents the Holy Spirit. Why the dove represents the Holy Spirit? If you check the feathers on the right wing of the dove, it has nine, wing, nine feathers, nine strong feathers, and every feather branches from it. They are nine because the gifts of the Spirit are nine. You can never access the gifts of the Spirit unless you have the Holy Spirit. And the other end now carries another nine strong feathers, which representing the nine beatitudes, the nine blessings of God. You can never be blessed by God unless you have the Spirit of God. And then the back there is a tail with the five strong feathers. And those five represents the fivefold ministry, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You can never be in your calling or you can never know your calling unless the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That means if you want your gift, or you want your blessing or you want your calling, you don't look for your gift out there. You don't seek for your calling out there. You run after the Holy Spirit. If I want a child, I can never look for a baby because I will die without a baby. If I want a child now, I go look for my beautiful wife and my wife gives me a child. Whenever you want a gift or a calling from God, you don't seek after a gift because a gift can give you the Holy Spirit. You seek after the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives you a gift. Now, now, the dove now is the only bird with breast. Uh, the eagles, they don't have it. Any other birds don't have breast. Only a dove. Why? The Bible says, when you were children, I fed you with milk. You can never be fed by God unless you have the Holy Spirit. If you want your spirit to be strong, if you want to have a six-pack in the spirit, you got to connect with the Holy Spirit. If you want the tricep and the bicep in the Holy Ghost. There is the fullness of your strength. There is the fullness of your joy. There is the fullness of everything that you need. You can go to the west. You can go to the north. You can go to the east or the south. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are wasting your time. I cried to God. I said, God, I will never go anywhere unless I have the Holy Spirit upon my life. I'm talking to somebody here who's been desiring the next level of God. God says, I have poured my anointing upon you. Now I'm releasing my spirit upon you. Touch your name and say, get ready for the Holy Spirit. 
Now, if you check now in the book of Genesis now, the Bible says when God was creating the whole earth, the earth was filled with water and the Spirit of God was wovering on top of the waters. Why is he not lending? Is because there is no way to lend. The Holy Spirit can never lend on you unless there is a place for him to lend in you. Yeah, he cannot lend anyway. There is water everywhere. Because the only way you can have the Holy Spirit is only when you have the Word of God or you have the anointing of God. It is the anointing that attracts the Holy Spirit. It is the Word in you that attracts the Holy Spirit. Without having the Word, you can never have the Holy Spirit. Without having the anointing, you can have the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, you have to understand this. The anointing is not cheap. There is a price to the anointing. When we crush the olive leaves, they bring the anointing oil. For you to get the anointing, you must be crushed. Some people, your pride is too much that the anointing can't drop on you. Some of you, you can't humble yourself. You are too greedy and you are too lazy enough to break your Yourself. And the Holy Spirit says, unless you deny yourself and pick the cross and follow Jesus, you can never have the Holy Spirit. You got to let go of the old you. Sometimes you wrong me, I don't talk to you the whole week. I don't care who you are. If you mess around with me, you're going to face my fist. The devil is a liar. God says, you got to let go of your your past because I can never pour the new wine in the old wine skin, which means the old wine have to go for the new anointing oil to be released upon you. So allow God to crush you and allow him to prune you. He called Moses when Moses was 40 years old. I feel the anointing of God in this place. Moses was 40 years old and God called him out of Egypt. Why is he calling him out? It's because when God calls you, he can never use you unless he prunes you, unless he chastens you, unless he breaks you and removes everything that he doesn't like inside of you. Notice what happened. It took 40 years for Egypt to enter inside Moses and it also took God. 40 years for Egypt to be taken out from Moses. Sometimes you want God to just come upon you and use you now. But God says, no, I got to do my work inside of you because I can never get you there unless you pass through here. I feel like preaching tonight. Look what happened now. The Bible says when they came out from Egypt, they went for years and years and years walking. Oh, yeah. But when Mary and Joseph were living the same place which they reached after years, they took only 11 days to reach out to Egypt, which means if God yet removed what he didn't like in the, in the Israelites, they were not going to go on a longer route. The reason why you are going on a longer route is because you don't want to give up your own life. You don't want to remove the old you. You still want to sneak out of church and do what you used to do. But God says you got to let go of the past because in the next season, I'm about about to do something bigger than what you can imagine. Huh? I'm about to do something in you. Huh? Something exceedingly huh? abundantly above what you can imagine. Huh? God is about to shock your family huh? because the people in your house, they don't understand the anointing that is upon you. Huh? They don't understand the anointing that runs upon you. Huh? It's one thing for you to be anointed. Huh? It's another thing for your sister 
sister or your brother or your mother huh, to believe that you are a man of God. Huh? The devil is a liar. Huh? Not in the next season. Huh? I see somebody here laying their hands on the sick huh? and the sick shall be healed. Huh? I see somebody walking in the streets huh? and people begin to fall down in the streets huh? because God says it's not by mighty huh? or by power huh? but by my spirit says the Lord. Huh? I fight for your neighbor. High five your neighbor huh? and say, neighbor, neighbor, get ready. Huh? It's about to go down. Huh? I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Now, the Bible says in the days of Noah now, huh? the earth was filled with water again, just like Genesis chapter number one. Huh? Noah then took a raven, and because he believed the raven was going to bring a message, he sent it out. Now, the raven represents some bad people in life. There are people that no matter you are good to them, they will never change. No matter you be a blessing to them, they will mock you and treat you bad. They will mock your God and embarrass you. So don't put your trust on men or horses or chariots. Put your trust in the Holy Spirit. Now, no one now sent the raven. The raven never came back. He then later on took a dove and sent it out. Remember the dove represents the Holy Spirit. The dove went and roamed and roamed and went in circles and the dove came back. Why? Because there was no way to land. If there is no word, if there is no anointing, the Holy Spirit can never land. Now he came back to the ark. Second time the dove was sent out. The Bible says it came back with the olive leaf because the olive leaf represents the anointing, which means the dove yet to sit on the tree. When you have the anointing, you represent a tree planted by the riverside that will never be dry in all seasons because the Holy Spirit will make you be fruitful in all seasons. Your story is about to turn around. There is a new thing that God is about to do that if told, you will never believe. I want to behave, but I feel a strong anointing moving in my spirit. The Bible says he sent out the dove, but the dove never came back for the third time. Oh, yeah, the heavens were closed. There is no dove now from the days of Noah. We are searching there is no dove, there is no dove. And Solomon, the prophet of God, that was prophesying in verbs, Proverbs, he came and he began to say, uh -uh, where is my dove? He's looking for the Holy Spirit. But there is no way the Holy Spirit is found because it takes the word and the anointing for the Holy Spirit to be around. Oh yeah, he goes by the Holy Spirit is nowhere to be found. The Bible then declares the ministry of Jesus in the beginning was the word. Somebody shout word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Verse number 4 and the word became flesh. The word was not made flesh, but the word became flesh, which means the word is flexible enough to change its form to fit any situation, which means if you are sick, the word can become a healing. He sent forth his word and his word healed them. I feel the anointing of God right here. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are suffering from, but as long as you have the word, you are good to go. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You can be in the fire. God says, I'll hold your hand and I'll walk with you in the fire. I'll walk with you in the valley. I'll walk with you even if you that cancer. I can walk with you with that HIV. I can walk with you even when you are going through that divorce. 
because I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the word became flesh and dwelt amongst men. Now Jesus is the word walking in the earth realm. The Bible says you went under the ministry of John the Baptist. And when John baptized him, because now the word is available on earth, the same heavens that were closed in the days of Noah, the heavens were opened in the days of John. And the same dove that left in the days of Noah, we saw the dove descending from the heavens. Because now the word is available on the earth realm. As long as you have the word of God in your spirit, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you tonight. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As long as you have the anointing, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you tonight. Jesus walked with his disciples three years, teaching them, imparting them the anointing. He washed their feet and she says, unless I wash you, you can never part of me. They carried the part of Jesus. They have direct impartation from Jesus. But notice what Jesus says when he resurrected from the dead. He says, you shall not go anywhere in three cities unless you are injured with power. But you shall be injured with power after the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Because you can go under your own power. You can go through your own mighty. Because ain't by mighty or by power, but by my spirit. In the name Next move of God, your intellect or cognitive energy is not going to do you anything in the Holy Spirit movement. You need the Holy Spirit himself for your life to turn around. So they went upstairs on the upper room. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now the Bible says as they were waiting on the upper room, they were waiting because they get a word from God. Ask your neighbor, do you hear the word? Because all you need is the word in you. And everything shall turn around in your life. As long as you have the word, the devil can mess you around. The devil came to Jesus and says, change the stones to become bread. Jesus says, you can't fool me. I have the word in my spirit. He says, if you can bow and worship me, just a two second bow, bow with your head. And I will give you every Thing you desire. He says, no, no, you can't fool me. I got the word. I came to tell somebody you need a word. And your situation will turn around. All you need is a word and everything is going to turn around in your life. Your daughter don't need anything from you. But your daughter need a word from God. You don't need to look for a shambok to discipline your own child for your child to be good. Your child only need your word and your life will never be the same again. That's why the Bible says train up a child the way he should grow. Not the way you want him to grow but the way he should grow and that's the word of God coming upon his life and his life will never be the same again. Whenever the devil shall come after you, God says just call on my word and and you shall see what shall happen. Now on the day of Pentecost, when the day fully came, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I don't know what you're looking for before God, but I know you can't get it unless you have the Holy Spirit. And tonight God says, are you ready? And you if you are ready, you got to shout hallelujah. Huh? Because as you shout, 
because as you shout, the power of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you. As you shall scream on the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is going to fill somebody. If you want to speak in tongues, oh, I feel the anointing of God already in this place. As you shall speak in other tongues, you shall put energy in your spirit. As the Holy Spirit shall come upon your life, cancer is going to disappear. When the perfect comes, the imperfect disappear. When the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, that addiction shall be broken because the Holy Spirit is coming with another anointing. Are you ready for the Holy Spirit? Are you ready for power? I want you to get up right now and I want you to cry to the Holy Spirit. For two minutes, I want you to cry to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I ain't going to leave this building without the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to leave this church without the anointing of God. Come on, lift up your voice and cry to God and say, Holy Spirit, feel me tonight. Holy Spirit, touch me tonight. Ah, let's sing. As you shout and pray to the Holy Ghost, something is going to move. Something is going to happen. The power of God is going to come upon you. It's not by mighty, oh, by power, but by my spirit says. Hi there. If you're like me and you like to click on things, Go ahead and click right here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this way, we'll be able to send the content to you directly. And each week you'll stay updated with the things that we post. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.